nothing much to do when you're out here alone But listen to the radio till daylight breaks Hoping they play something that'll keep you awake Behold, my trucker station came to an end But behold, a new savior stepped right in Thank God for the satellite and radio For good trucking music, there's a place to go Bill Mack and Cindy and Dave Nemo Thank God for... Good morning, good morning, guys and gals Yeah! We are still in Captas Casing, Ontario. We're sitting here at the uh, so-called Fly and J. It's like a shell slash Fly and J. And we are just about ready to put her in gear and get out of here. Yeah, that's right. We are just warming everything up. We got uh, 557 right now so in about three minutes we'll put her in gear and we'll get out of here I did see the uh, UK over the road uh, trucker there he gave me a shout out back so we appreciate it I saw it this morning I watched the video and uh, yeah so uh, you talked about uh, on the road it's kind of hard to uh, have the internet yes it is indeed it is uh, if you travel a lot into the United States there is a uh, Sprint Wi-Fi hotspot uh, hot system you can purchase through a uh, third-party dealer and I could give you the info if you need it or if you're interested in it but uh, uh, usually it goes for about a hundred uh, US dollars a month and you get 60 gigabytes of data so that would probably help you out a lot to uh, upload your videos on the road if you are interested in that and stuff like that and uh, i know i commented yesterday on your video about your uh, interest in buying that truck and uh, yeah i definitely would make a video about it i might just wait till i get a little bit down the road and i'll talk about it but uh, if i remember hopefully but uh, anyways, let's get out of here and then uh, we'll have ourselves a fantastic journey and that's coming right along with me and let's look out of the window and see what I see. Alrighty guys, here we are, uh, still on Highway 11, cruising along, it's a nice sunshine today and uh, as I told you yesterday, there is some snow on the ground, you can see that been uh, snowing I guess here uh, the last week or two I guess well the last time I come across here I didn't have no snow so must have been before uh, or in the last two weeks I guess since I've been cruising along here so been seeing on and off I see a little bit more snow and then it disappears a little more and then I see a little more snow again stuff like that but anyways I got a question the other day on how I became an owner operator I'm going to tell you guys a little bit on how I became an owner operator and I'm going to talk about it a little bit and I'm going to talk about what I think is the best way to become an owner operator yeah, I've been sitting there and thinking about that question for a while and, and how I became an owner operator was I drove for an owner operator for about two and a half years prior to that I worked for Big Freight I worked there for about a year and two months and then I came over to Penners and I worked uh, for this owner operator for about two and a half years and uh, I switched trucks on and off uh, I think in total I drove I think three or four trucks in total that I drove for him and the last one I drove for him I drove that one for about six months and it was a good truck that low mileage well not like super low but I had about uh, a million three hundred thousand kilometers I don't know how much that is in miles, but anyways, uh, all of a sudden one day he came to me and he uh, said, uh, 
I think you would be a good owner operator, he said, because uh, you take real good care of the equipment or you uh, you pay attention to the truck, he said, you uh, you know a lot about trucks, you know, you uh, you try and, and how, I, how should I word it, I forget, I lost my wording there, but he said you try to get to know the truck, you know, like you uh, you really work hard in maintaining it, like he, I read, uh, I write him notes and stuff like that where things needed to be fixed on the truck and stuff like that, so he said I think you would be a good owner-operator owner and he said I'm uh, offering to sell you uh, the truck that you are driving. And so I talked to the wife about it and we decided, you know what, since I'm going to be a trucker for a while anyways, I had a lot of debt. I needed to uh, be in the trucking for a while and so uh, me and my wife decided, you know what, that would probably uh, be a fantastic idea and uh, he offered me to buy the truck through him so I wouldn't have to go to the bank which I thought that was a fantastic idea of course I had to give him a little interest on it and all that stuff you know regular stuff but uh, he, uh, he offered to go through him so that's how I got started and I uh, gave him a down payment, uh, which was really low actually. The way he, uh, asked, what he asked for was one month payment as a down payment. And that's what we did. We set up a contract and I did a lease to buy contract with him. And uh, worked out really good. The truck is paid for now. I uh, paid for it in February of this year all done with and uh, I also finished paying for my APU unit here this month uh, the 1st of November I uh, did my last payment on my APU unit for those of you that don't know what an APU unit is it's an auxiliary unit that charges my batteries it's got a uh, antifreeze line going through the motor and pumps antifreeze throughout the motor in winter to keep the motor warm and it also has an AC air conditioning so in summer I, I have an AC in there, you know, so I don't need to run the big engine. And uh, also have a bunk heater in it, which is also controlled by the auxiliary unit. And I recommend buying that to anybody that uh, that's an owner-operator. Yeah, it's costly. It is. It really is costly to buy it, but in my opinion, it's, it's paid for itself. And uh, I did the calculation, you know. Uh, in my opinion, that uh, you know, it, it works out to uh, to uh, be paying for itself, you know. But anyways, I also said I was going to talk about what I think is the best idea to become an owner operator, and I think what I did, I think that is the best way to become an owner operator, and uh, not particularly in the way of saying going to an owner operator to do the financing through it but I think if you can drive the truck for a minimum of six months and then make a decision on if you can buy the truck or if you want to buy the truck I think that's the best way to go about it and the reason why I'm saying that is that way you get to know the truck you know what kind of problems it has you have a little bit of a history of that truck and I think that is the absolute best way to buy a truck. Now the finances that's up to you if you uh, want to go to the owner operator if he offers that to you or or if, the, if you want to go to the bank that I think is, doesn't really matter. But I think that's the absolute best way to become an owner operator. And second of all, I think you also got to look at what kind of truck you buy, what kind of engine, what kind of company you drive for, what kind of loads you haul. If you haul heavy loads, you kind of want to go with a lighter truck. And uh, you also want to know 
you know, you want to overlook the history a little bit on the uh, trucks and engines and stuff like that. On what kind of engine is performing really good, what kind of engine is lasting really long, you know, all that kind of stuff. What the maintenance reports are in general of engines and, and trucks, you know, and uh, how, how much you, you are going to spend in fuel, like what kind of fuel mileage you'll get. Uh, I think that all plays a factor in buying a truck. If you get crappy fuel mileage, I think then it's not a good idea to buy that particular truck because uh, you're not going to make any money with that truck. Uh, no, I know a lot of people up here in North America are all for the uh, Peterbilt 379, you know, like that's a beautiful truck. A lot of people like that truck, including me, I really like that truck. But a lot of those type of trucks, they're older trucks, they got the uh, Commons engine in it, and they got terrible fuel mileage, like 5 to 5.5 miles per gallon. No, I, I don't think that's a good idea, especially for somebody that's uh, going to become a new owner-operator. Like, he's never been an owner-operator, you know? I don't think that's a good idea for somebody like that to go out and buy a Peterbilt like that, you know? But, that's your decision, I guess. And, uh, hey, whatever you prefer is your decision, but... I think a Kenworth is a, is a nice truck, Volvos are a nice truck, Internationals are a nice truck, you know, Peterbilt, I guess the newer styles are, are okay too, but anyways, uh, I think those are some of the most important reasons to, uh, to look at when buying a truck, is uh, also Look at the maintenance report of that truck. If you uh, if you are going to go out there and buy a truck that you have never driven before, my opinion would be take it to a shop. If they will allow you to take it to a shop and put it on a dyno and get them to pull the ECM report and uh, look at the report on the dyno and they can tell you if that engine is still in good performing condition or if that engine is just about done, you know? If you, especially if you buy an older truck, you know? If you buy a new truck, obviously that makes no sense to take it to a dyno, right? But if you're buying an older truck, I would recommend you getting it to a dyno. And, and what that is, they put it on a dyno where they test the engine and all that and then you can see how the engine is performing and also pull an ECM report and see what kind of idling time that engine has got what the uh, fuel mileage has been in the history of that truck and you can see, you can learn all kinds of stuff about the engine by pulling the ACM uh, report and those, those are all very important uh, steps and my opinion to go and buy a truck especially if you have never purchased a truck before but anyways those are just some of my ideas and do I think it's still worth buying a truck in this economy I think it is I think it is if you're careful and and you uh, you manage money okay you ma you know how to manage money I think it's still a good idea to buy a truck and then that factors into some of the other uh, uh, things there if, if you are not good at managing your money I would not recommend you to become an owner operator uh, I know a lot of people they go out and they go buy a new truck and they see these big amount of dollars coming in from being an owner operator you know you might get a five thousand dollar paycheck or a ten thousand dollar paycheck in a month or something like that because that's roughly what we make as owner as an owner operator roughly around between nine and ten thousand dollars a month you can roughly make as an owner operator if you work hard and that is usually after the fuel has been deducted and uh, but then you gotta make your truck payments, you gotta do maintenance on the truck, 
usually the truck will cost you around fifteen hundred dollars a month in maintenance and then you got to pay taxes and all that stuff so you're not left with any huge number of money like that but a lot of people you know they go and see you know I, I might have five thousand dollar paycheck at the end of the month left after all my payments have been done after my maintenance has been deducted and all that and then a lot of people I see out there they go and spend that money you know uh, that's never a good idea because at the end of the year you won't have to pay taxes right because as an owner operator I'm not deducting any taxes so you have to take that into consideration all that stuff uh, and then if you are not able to save that money and put that in a, in a business savings account or something like that or just leave it in your account then I would not recommend you go out and buy a, buy a truck and become an owner operator you have to really work hard at uh, becoming an owner operator you have to learn to save money and, uh, and I also recommend if you want to become an owner operator save up at least ten thousand dollars or something like that uh, so that way you have a little bit of money in there so when you start as an owner operator especially if you buy a used truck you uh, you probably are going to have to spend some money uh, especially the first couple of months and fixing some stuff because usually a lot of people if you know if you want to get rid of your truck you're not going to spend a lot of money into the truck and maintaining it right so then when you buy the truck you know you're probably going to have to spend a few dollars in getting the truck safety and uh, and, and getting it to where it's running really good you know you might have to buy new tires well if you buy new tires that's like an automatic five thousand dollars so it's not cheap to, to be an owner operator either you know can you make a little more money than a company driver yes you can is it worth it in my opinion yes and and who is it for well if you're a single guy it's definitely uh, if, if you like to be on the road and uh, you're not really interested in uh, having every weekend off if that doesn't uh, bother you too much not having every weekend off I think it's for you now is it for a family man like me not really I mean yes you can make it work like I am making it work but uh, is it the best for your family probably not a lot of a lot of people or, or a lot of women out here if they you know if you get married the woman wants you to be at home with them you know uh, women need the men to be there for them and uh, it's hard and and I would say go I'll go as far as to say this a lot of North American women they will they can't handle it they they, they they don't they don't handle it very well for the man to be gone for such a long time you know and that is hard it's really hard on the family for the kids especially if you have kids it's extremely hard on the kids not to see their daddy for a long time you know but uh, you can still make it happen you just have to sit down with your wife and agree that uh, that's what you guys are going to do and you have to work together and making it happen but anyways some of my ideas and whatever some of you may not like what I said some of you might hate me for saying what I said but that is the honest truth it is not easy to be a truck driver that is a guarantee but if you like that and that's and your interest that's what you like to do go for it yeah that's the way it goes anyways that's a, a good topic I think that I talked about there uh, I think uh, I would like to say thank you for the uh, youtuber that asked me to, to talk about this topic it's a great idea I think I talked about it for a little bit previously 
but I don't think I've ever gone into depth so much that what I did today and I think it's a great idea to talk about it every once in a while but anyways we'll keep on rolling remember we are seven days behind today is Sunday November 15th and we are enjoying the beautiful day out here today although we got to wipe off the mud every once in a while so you can see clearly out of my window but hey that's part of the job so we'll be right back y'all alrighty guys it looks like OPP has captured himself a customer yeah Winnipeg Motor Express not doing so good don't know what he did but he got himself pulled over that is one thing that's for sure <laughs> yeah we've been uh, cruising along here pretty good we are already past Thunder Bay Ontario we're just cruising and giving her working real hard actually today yeah already got 728 kilometers in today so we are just cruising right along looks like right now we'll be at uh, the truck stop and ride in Ontario probably for about quarter to five five o'clock something like that so we'll be uh, there bright and early that's kind of what my goal was anyways. Speed warning. Get up there early. So that way I can uh, get up early tomorrow morning and uh, get her going. Probably have about four hours to Winnipeg or something like that. And then uh, I can do my delivery there first thing in the morning. That'd be perfect. Yeah, it's just been an absolutely gorgeous day today. No wind at all. It's nice and sunny. It's above zero, above freezing point. So that's awesome. Yeah. No wildlife has been out here. Nothing really been bothering us at all. That's the way we like it. No scales have been open. Just an all around fantastic day. I hope you guys all had a fantastic Sunday too. Mine certainly has been going very well. And we still have a little bit of snow up here. Apparently at home there is no snow there yet, but we do got snow up here in Ontario, that's for sure. I thought for sure this would be all gone by now because it's kind of warm, you know, it's like 8 degrees. I thought it would be melted by now, but no, it's still there. Anyways, we'll continue on with our journey and make it over to Dryden. Well guys, we are coming into Dryden, Ontario. It is right. We have had ourselves a fantastic day. We are just about done for today too. I'm just gonna go up to the Husky down the road here. And we are done for today. We got 955 kilometers in right now. Probably got another two kilometers to add on to that. That's about 600 miles. Just shy probably of 600 miles. Well, that's a good day worth of driving, and we are pretty much out of hours. So we're gonna call it a day. Yeah, you gotta follow the law, right? You can't go if we don't have hours. No way. That's right. That, that's all right. I'm tired, anyways. So let's Approaching go over to the truck stop. One kilometer. There it is. One kilometer. That's right. 
we'll go over there and we'll call it a day. Well guys, we are done for today. We had ourselves a fantastic day with the driving today. That's for sure. And now we are gonna go to bed and get up early tomorrow morning and get to Winnipeg. Hopefully we can get there around 8 o'clock. So, let's go to bed. And then we'll see you guys again tomorrow morning. Uh-oh. My light just went out. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing when it gets winter, you know. My uh, light gets goes out real fast because it seems like the battery seems to drain a little faster. So, But anyways, that's about it. With that being said, thank you guys for watching today's vlog. I hope it was uh, entertaining for you. And uh, that's pretty much what my channel is about, is uh, entertaining you guys a little bit. And uh, hey, and uh, I like to encourage people, you know. If I can encourage somebody to be a trucker or to become a YouTuber or become a better person by being positive and stuff like that, that is pretty much what my channel is about. I, I love encouraging people, teaching people telling you guys about stuff that's going on you know mostly teaching if I can teach you something or if I can talk about something if you guys bring something up if I can talk about that I like that I appreciate that very much so with that being said we'll see you guys tomorrow